Greetings, friends, Romans, and countrymen. Please lend me your ears and other parts of your body because I would like in this video to talk to you about nihilism and the problems of I don't exist, the problems of there's nobody here, the problems of Tony Parson. Nothing against Tony Parson, but yes, let's address that. Now, because I am a, a sympathiser for the Buddhist cause, although I'm not a Buddhist, there's, a, there's a, a good phrase that the Buddhists use, and that's this. They say, before awakening, enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After awakening, or enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. And that phrase is a good point to say, through the realisation, or at the end of the realisation, nothing actually changes. And that's what I kind of want, I want to address and, and go into detail in this video. But before I do go into the rest, I'm just going to do an analogy to try and help you grasp what I'm pointing to. And for this analogy, I'd like you to look at this picture. Now you may have seen this picture before. This picture apparently was um, from a drawing from a German magazine in 1892. And uh, it was used by psychologist Joseph uh, Jastrow and made famous by the famous Mr. Ludwig Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein. And uh, it, uh, I'm going to use it as an analogy for what I'm about to describe. Let us say that the idea that I am a person, I am this body, I am, I exist, I am separate from everything else, that is effectively a rabbit. So we, we go to this, pain, this picture and we say, look, there's the rabbit. And then someone comes up to us and says, you know, it's also actually a duck. Then initially go, no, it's not a duck, it's a rabbit. Clearly it's a rabbit. Anybody who says it's a duck is <laughs> out of their minds. And they go, no, it's a rabbit. And hopefully you can see it is also a duck. If you haven't seen it, then, well, <laughs> the two protuberances to the left could be rabbit ears or could be the two parts of the bill of a duck. I hope you can see that. If you've gone <clears throat> from a belief that this was only a picture of a, of a rabbit and then you can see clearly how it can be both a rabbit and a duck, you've seen through the illusion of the picture. It can be both depending on your perspective. But the thing to mention here is nothing has actually changed. The picture hasn't changed. Your eyesight hasn't changed. It's just you've kind of seen what's going on. If you came to this only thinking it was, it was a rabbit because you couldn't see the other way that the picture could be interpreted, you'd be stuck in one mode of thinking, one mode of, uh, of, of uh, viewing this. However, with the interpretation, if I'm putting the interpretation of no self onto the picture, it will be similar to saying, I used to believe that it was a rabbit and now the rabbit does not exist. There is only a duck, which is clearly nonsense. It can be both. It can be a rabbit, but you can also see that it can also be a duck. You don't look at this picture and see through its illusion and then say one of them does not exist or there is no rabbit. Now, how can we look into this further? Well, after an initial realisation of no self, it may be tempting to say or infer there's no one here. I don't exist. But that's not quite true. There's two ways we can look at this. <clears throat> if you've seen through the illusion of the self, it should be clear to you that the illusion of the self is created, we can kind of say, by the thinking and thought process itself. That the thinking and thought process itself is automatically believed in and that creates the illusion. So in another way of expressing that, we can say that the self is dependent on thinking. It's dependent on the thought process. Now, Recognising something that is, that is dependent on the thinking does not mean it does not exist. 
there is a different way of approaching that. We can say, if we recognise that the self is dependent on thoughts, we can say that is what it is. That the self is a concept, it's an idea, a belief. But we can also say, because we've recognised that it is dependent on thoughts, we recognise there is no inherently existing self. But that's not the same as saying that the self does not exist, that there is no self. And we can further look into that by considering what we mean by exist. The word exist references how we address things in our conceptual framework of the world. If something, you, if something is found within our conceptual framework of the world, then it ex is said to exist. If it's not found within the conceptual framework of the world, it does not exist. However, the self is part of our conceptual understanding of the world. And further, the self exists as a word. The self exists as a belief, an idea about a separate person. That is how it exists. It does not exist as an inherently real, separate, solid, permanent thing. Now there are further problems with the suggestion, I do not exist at all, I do not exist, there is no me, there is no one here. No matter what happens, similar to the Buddhist statement, chop wood, carry water, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, after enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, nothing changes. Now, no matter how much you say, I don't exist, there is no one here, which is a nihilistic belief, if you want to push it that far. If you believe more that there is no one here is truer than there is someone here, that is a belief, that is a nihilistic belief you've landed on. And that won't assist, because well, no matter what happens, we still have to live in the conceptual framework of the world. No matter how much you state, I don't exist, there is no, no one here, there is no me, you still have to go to work, you still have to buy food, you still have to pay taxes. These things are unavoidable. These things have to continue. And you cannot live from the perspective, I don't exist. Similarly with the, the picture I just showed, all you need to do is see how the illusion operates. Nothing changes. Seeing through the illusion of that picture does not mean the duck does not exist or the rabbit does not exist. Nothing changes when you see through the illusion. And the problem is, as we are referencing the world and we believe the world is real and we, the self, are a separate entity, thing within the world, we are living inside the illusion. But to recognise the illusion does not mean the illusion disappears. You just recognise it for what it is and it carries on. Nothing changes. And that's the same with anything you want to inquire upon, whether it be the self, objects in the world, qualities, everything is empty. And have a look at another video if you are interested in the con Buddhist concept of emptiness. Everything is empty and everything being empty can be realised both on a mental level as an understanding and on an experiential level as well. It's possible to realise it in both ways. Many people go and see a gentleman called Tony Parsons and I believe his usual stance is there is no one here, there is just energy. And that's, I don't want to knock him too much because as a, as a way of breaking things down, that's quite understandable. In fact, sci as a scientific basis, everything is energy. So, you know, in a scientific way, he's quite right. It's all energy. But he, he, he denies appearances. He denies conventional reality. And how far would he deny conventional reality? It would only work so far. 
when Tony Parsons is like, booking a venue, for example, and he's on the telephone, and they say, oh, who's, who, who's calling? Who wants to book a venue? Does he really say, oh, there's no one here, there's only energy? Can you see? That's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because at the end of the day, you, we, live in a we live in a conventional reality. There's a famous story of a certain philosopher whose name escapes me at the moment, who was doing some experiments on, rea on reality. And he was saying, oh no, it can't be real, it can't be real, you know. And then he, he, he sees a massive stone and he goes, I deny conventional, conventional reality thus. And he kicks the stone and stubs his toe. He goes, ah! Exactly. No matter how much you can say that the stone does not exist, if you kick it, it's going to hurt. <laughs> you cannot get away from conventional reality. All that is required is to see how the illusion operates. And seeing how the illusion operates does not dispel the illusion, it just shows you how it works. And that's all you need to do. Anyway, I hope that has been enlightening, awakening, perhaps not. Maybe you disagree, I don't know. If you do, write a comment. Always anxious to hear from people. Thank you very much for watching the video. Have a look at my other ones, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.